welcome to our review on changes in energy stores. So the first thing we need to know is what are the eight energy stores? What I've done is I've given you a table at the bottom there that takes you through the eight energy stores and an example of where you could find them. So the eight energy stores you need to know about, chemical, thermal, kinetic, gravitational, elastic, nuclear, electrostatic and magnetic. So if we're thinking about chemical, then that would be things like your food. It could be fuels, for example. Thermal energy, that would be an example of what we see in a hot bath. Kinetic is all to do with movement. Gravitational would be something that's higher off the ground. Elastic is where we're stretching something like an elastic band or a spring. If we're talking about nuclear, then that could be either fusion or fission. Electrostatic is where we've got two opposite charges being held apart, and the magnetic is where the opposite poles of a magnet are held apart. When we're actually talking about these energy stores, it's not a case of if the energy is in one store, it has to stay there. That energy can actually be transferred from one store to another, and there are four ways that that can actually happen. You've got heating, by waves, by an electric current, or when a force moves an object. So one of the things that you could be asked to do on your exam is to actually consider what's happening in terms of energy in a given system. And whenever we talk about a system, we're referring to either an individual object or a group of objects. Now, the way we generally do this is through the use of a flow diagram. And there are four steps that you can follow to help you get this right each time. So the first thing you need to do is identify the energy store at the beginning. Then you need to identify the energy store at the end. Third thing is identify how that transfer is taking place. And then you draw the flow diagram with those three bits of information. To give you an example of this, then what we've got here is a flow diagram. So if we have a look at the far left hand side, first of all, you can see we've got our energy store at the beginning. So we're looking at the example of a battery powered torch. So our energy store at the beginning is the energy within the batteries, which is a chemical energy store. Then our energy at the end is going to be that transfer to the thermal energy store of our surroundings. And the way that that's going to happen, so the actual method of transfer is by an electric current in the wires. So what we can actually see is that from the chemical energy store in the battery, we go to the electric current in the wires. That's our method of transfer, which transfers the energy to the surroundings. And as we said, one of the main places there will be the thermal energy store of the surroundings, because as you know, if you put your hand near the end of a torch, it is warmer. But we will also see energy being transferred to the surroundings by light waves as well because the whole purpose of our torch is to actually light the area. So make sure that you can draw those flow diagrams because when you're looking at your actual exam, they could ask you to do this for several common situations. So make sure you can do this for objects being projected or thrown upwards, an object that's actually hitting something. If we're accelerating an object by a constant force or a slowing down vehicle, or even something like bringing water to the boil using an electric kettle. So make sure you go through those four steps, identifying the energy store at the start, identifying the energy stores at the end, and then the methods of transfer before you attempt your flow diagrams. If you do that, you should get it right each time. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now recall the eight different energy stores and examples of where we'd find them, the four different methods of energy transfer, and you can draw flow diagrams to show how the energy stores are changed within any given system.